Sprite movement in Flame is controlled by the update method. The update method can be either in the sprite component itself or in the game. I'm going to override the existing update method in the flame game to move the characters on the left and right axis. This is the sixth video in the flame tutorial 2022 playlist. The girl variable is a sprite component and the sprite component has a property called X, which is the uh, position on the light left right axis. So if we increment the X position by one, oh, she starts to move. For the X position of the boy, we're going to decrement it, meaning that we're going to subtract one pixel uh, every time through this update loop. So we should actually use the X position, not the Y position. The Y will make him move up and down, and that's not what we want for this story. So let's set him up with the Y position. And so he'll be moving from the right of the screen to the uh, left hand side of the screen. And let's see what happens. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good if I stop it right there. If you're just joining in, the storyline that I'm envisioning is uh, ancient Japan. And there's a you know, young woman and there's a love interest with a young man. And he has to go off to some battle and she's you know, a bit sad about, about it. So they're having some discussion about whether he should go off or not. Uh, the DT is for the uh, differences between the different uh, processors that you might have. So it makes it run more consistently. For simplicity, you could replace a 30 times DT with just a single integer. However, the game may run at different speeds depending on what device you're running the game on. The sprite component does have a property called anchor and we can set the anchor uh, so that when you move in the X position, uh, where is that X position? Is it on the upper left hand corner, which is the default, or you could set it to another position. I'm going to put the anchor at the top center, meaning it's the top of her head and uh, the center in the left to right position. Centering the x-axis of the left to right, it makes it a little easier to visualize where she's going to be in relationship to other objects on the screen. For example, where is she going to be in relationship to the boy depending on how they're moving on a left to right axis. So I'm set the anchor for the boy also to the same. So when you compare them, they'll be, they have the same a center point and uh, it'll be a little easier if they're going from a left or from a right angle. It's just to visualize the relationship between the two characters when you're developing your game. I want to stop the girl when she's moving automatically when she hits a certain position on the screen. So I'm going to set up an if statement in the update loop and the if statement is going to look for the position of the girl um, with using the screen width, which is at size zero. So the midway point of the horizontal screen is size zero divided by two. And so if she's within the, if she's before the midway point of the horizontal screen, uh, she'll move. And if not, then she'll stop. So let's make sure that she can stop here. And she stops, but the boy is still moving and he's running away from her. I'm going to have her stop a little bit further to the left so that it's just a little bit better orientation with that, the background image, which is this cherry blossom tree. Right now she's kind of like right over Mount Fuji. So I'm going to stop her a hundred pixels over from the left and I'll test it again. And the boy's still going to be moving, but, uh, Nice. Okay. She's right under that tip of the cherry blossom tree. Okay. Now let's automatically control the point at which the boy stops as he enters from screen right. Uh, so we'll also set up a similar uh, if statement for the, for the boy. And since he's going from the right hand side to the left of the screen and the left of the screen has an X value of zero, 
we're going to make sure that he's greater than um, the midpoint or you know, somewhere to the right of the midpoint of the screen. And if, if he is, if his position is greater than the midpoint, uh, minus 50, then we'll have a move. And if not, then he won't move. And then in the future, we'll probably trigger some of these movements with uh, maybe a tappable or something to start uh, each set of movements. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So the only thing is that as he's entering in from the right, he's kind of walking backwards. So I'm going to flip him uh, when he, you know, when he first starts walking. So we're going to use the flip horizontally uh, on that sprite component. So the boy is a sprite component. And then when, when we restart the game now, hopefully he'll be facing her as he enters the screen and they start walking. You know, he's a little depressed because he's going off to war here. Boom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the boy facing uh, his face toward the left of the screen as he's entering in from stage right. But then when he meets the girl, he's going to flip over so that he's facing away from her because, you know, he, he's probably in love with her, but he, he feels he needs to go off and battle. and He'll probably die and lose her. So what we'll do is we'll set up a Boolean variable for whether he should be turned away or not. And uh, so if the girl, you know, when she stops, that's the point at which she's going to turn away. So on line 51, that should actually be two equal signs here to turn away equals false. But I'll, uh, I'll correct this later. And so if he is turned away, uh, if, no, if the girl has stopped, then we're going to flip the boy and have him face away from her. So by sandwiching the flip horizontally between the if check and then you turn away equals true, uh, it will uh, cause it to flip only once. Because the next time through the loop, he won't flip. Uh, he's not flipping right now because I have an error on line 51 that there should be two equal signs. So let's, let's fix that right now. And then we can restart the game and see whether it works or not. So I'll next either set up a, a touch or gesture detector to control this or put the text in so we can hear what they're thinking. Subscribe to the channel for future updates on using Flutter and Flame to make some fun and creative games yourself. Have a great day.